Welcome boardwalkers to my studio. I'm CB Mac and on this channel you'll find tutorials about plein air painting with watercolors, wash, ink, graphite, and colored pencils. I also like to do some art supply reviews. In today's video I thought I would share with you today my uh, swatching of my second watercolor palette of 24 Arteza watercolors and this was my um, upgrade from my Sakura Koi which was my very first palette. So let's get started. I've got my Painter's Color Travel Diary which is a 6 inch by 8 inch with the 100 cotton watercolor paper, paper with uh, 10 removable sheets and the glass seam interleaving, which is 140 pounds cold press. And as you see here, we've got the Sakura set that we used last time, which was my favorite first set. Today we're doing Arteza, and they came in watercolor tubes. And what I did was I took an old cookie tin here, an old Oreo cookie tin, one of my favorite Christmas cookie tins, and I took some plain full-size pans, and you can see a couple of half pans in here, and I put magnetic strips on the bottom, and then I just put them in the bottom of the pan here, in the bottom of the tin. Now the tin, this is a four year old tin since I've been watercoloring, and so you can see why I don't use it very much, because when you put water in it and spray it down, the tin gets rusty. So that's why I've gone to a plastic watercolor palette most of the time. All right, we'll get this going. I've got some water in my small lid that goes with my green plastic jar, my travel water container that I use. I've got some water in my glass little glass jar. And then of course I've got my water dropper bottle that I like to use to put just a couple of drops of water on each of these watercolor blocks. And as you can see, these are very crumbly and very dried out looking. I have not used these in a couple of years now. So I had to reconstitute them two days ago and let them sit and rehydrate back up. But they'll still be able to use, you'll still be able to use them and you'll still be able to see what gorgeous colors we've got with those. So let's start with our wetting our paper here. And we're going to do number A101 Titanium White, which is this white square on the right side of my palette. The left side is a Chinese white that I added to it. And as we see, that one's not very opaque. Okay. Second color is going to be A102 Lemon Yellow. And that's going to be like your lemon yellows for every other brand. I used this set when I was 
seriously thinking about taking on watercolor painting as a hobby and learning about watercolor. This next color I'm putting down is A139 Yellow Pale. This color is A170 Gamboge. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's a little warmer yellow. Fifth color is going to be A113 Yellow Ochre. This is our earth color. There we go. Our sixth color is A114 orange yellow they call it and I just call it orange I don't know why they call it an orange yellow I guess because when we water it out it becomes a orange yellow which would make sense See orange yellow, all right. It's kind of like yellow ochre almost, just a hint of orange in it. We've got A145 Vermilion Red, which is an orangey red. Ooh, very orangey red and very powerful and I've gotten way too much color on my brush because that has changed my water that one I got a little too carried away with there we go mm. Then we have A106. I'm going to turn this palette because I cannot see my colors. A106 Scarlet Red. It's a nice vibrant red. Then we have A one zero five crimson red. Y'all can hear Boone snoring away in the background again, and I apologize for that. That's about the only time that I can get any painting done with him. It's during his nap time. He's not as quiet as Tiberius or Kermit. They're both taking a nap in here also. Okay, our next color is let's 
six, seven, eight, nine. Number ten, which is rows, which I am assuming is the same as a permanent rose or a quinacridone rose, their version. That number is A115. Number 11 is Lilac, A134. Oop, another powerful color that I have taken too much of. Back some. There we go. These are really vibrant colors. They wet real easily, even when they're dried out and you reconstitute them back by putting water on them. I try and put water on them when they're really dry and crumbly and let them sit for a day so that they absorb the water back up into them and become a little softer and easier to use. There we go. Number 12, A125 Violet. This is going to be a little darker purple. Ooh, really darker purple. Ooh. Another one of those overpowering colors that I've gotten too much of. There we go. Spread out there. There we are. I might need to go back and dip my brush in this lilac so we can see an actual... Gradient difference is this one next to it. There we go, that's a little better. And we'll see how those two dry while we're finishing up. If you're enjoying this video, could I ask you to t please take a moment to tap on the like button, share this video with others who you think might enjoy it, and click on the bell notification for upcoming um, notices of my uh, future videos. This makes a huge difference in the growth and support of my channel, and I really appreciate your support. I'd like to give a shout out to the 17 subscribers that I have already. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel and I am actually really surprised with how many subscribers I have already. Alright, let's get back to painting. We've got A110 which is ultramarine blue. I'm going to have to use my second container, it's looking like. My water is super dirty. Alright, let's grab from the queen there. And pull that across. And now we have... A124, which is cobalt blue, one of my favorite blues.
we have phthalo blue, A11. I'm seeing the difference in it. It was looking like my cobalt there for a split second. I thought I dipped in the wrong one. There we go. Disperse there. Number 16 is going to be our Prussian Blue, which is A116. Ooh. Another one of those powerful colors. Boom. Please be quiet. A123 is Cerulean. Sit still now. Oops, sorry about that. Boom decided to knock my tripod over. Now, where were we? We were at A123 Cerulean Blue, which is a good sky blue. I'm going to turn this palette. You can see why I did not use this palette very long because you cannot see over the edge of it when you're painting with it being such a high deep palette. But for my first palette starting out, it was actually a really easy palette to take and I could take it plain air painting, although it was cumbersome. All right, we're at a167 light green. Nice bright green. Apparently I have used sap green a lot, which is our next color, because all I have is left on it is a half pan. And that is A164. Having a little bit harder time reconstituting, but we'll get it there. There we go. Yep. 
comes a nice little light green too. A nice little spring natural green. And we got number 20 is A158 Deep Green. Another color I used because, again, I have just the half pan left. Ooh. And it's powerful. Powerful, powerful. Blue green. Great mixing green. Now we're into our earth colors. We've got A107 Burnt Sienna. Then A18 Burnt Umber. Very crumbly still. I picked up too much pigment on the tip of my brush there. Twenty-third color is going to be A one eighteen raw umber. You can find out the light fastness and the pigment numbers on the back of the package that these came in. I got a 24 set of tubes, of 5 milliliter tubes, and it did have all the numbers, pigment numbers, light fastness, and any of the other rating numbers that you wanted to have find out if you're interested in all the different pigments. And our last color that we have is A163. They call it Noir, which is French for black. goes out to a light gray. You can water it down enough to be a gray. And there we go. Our 24 
Arteza watercolors in five milliliter tubes. You have a great possibility of mixing various colors with these. Um, and once again, if you're enjoying this uh, video, please feel free to tap on the like button, share this video, click on the bell icon for the upcoming coming notifications. Um, in this video, in video description below, um, you'll find affiliate links for the watercolors and all the different brushes that I use. Um, that just means that I'm awarded a small commission for each purchase made through those at no additional cost to you. And I'm hoping in the next week or so, with the weather warming up and that, that we'll be able to actually get out and do some plain air painting. I think my next video... Uh, I think I have a couple of um, more swatching videos that I'm going to do. But I think my next video, I'm going to try and put together a video on what I would like to take for my plein air painting supplies. And maybe do an upcoming video of the easel and the tripods that I use. So, once again, thank you to those 17 subscribers. I appreciate your support. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Goodbye for now.